Good evening and welcome to TL Physics and today I'm going to do a synoptic example of uh, a nuclear question. And what I'm asking here is how much energy is released in one kilogram of polonium that has been flung with one neutron and decayed into xenon and zirconium and three neutrons, how much energy would be released from that? And I've been given information of polonium has this horribly long-winded number of 239.06765. Atomic units xenon is 133.9054U. Zirconium 102.9266U. And a neutron, which you find at the front of your data sheet, is 1.00867. So the first thing I want to work out is how much energy is released in one reaction. Okay, and I do that by finding the mass deficit. Okay. So I've got here 239.060765 plus by 100867 goes to 133.9054 plus 1.02.9266 plus 3 times 1.00867 plus my question mark. And the first thing I'm going to do is simplify this down because it is quite, quite beefy. So I've got 239.060, no, plus 1.00867. And that there is 240.06935. Okay. And this side is going to be 133.9054 uh, plus 102.9266 um, plus 3, 3 times 1.00867. And this gives me an answer, just making sure, of 239.85801. Plus my unknown. And my unknown is going to be this one, take away this one. And that's going to be 0 0.211425U. And we're going to convert this into joules using the idea that 1U is 931.5 MeV. So this here. is going to be 196.9 MeV, which equals, so times by 1.10 to the 6, times by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, 3.15 times 10 to the minus 11 joules. So this one reaction is going to give me 3.15 times 10 to the minus 11 joules. I want to know how much one kilo of the stuff is going to give out. So I need to find out how many reactions are going to take place. I know one mole of the polonium 239, okay, is 239 grams, and we'll have 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms in it. And I know that from looking at Avogadro's constant. What I have is a kilo of the stuff, so I need to find out how many moles I have. So a thousand over two hundred and thirty-nine is four point one eight moles. This means in total I have two point five two times ten to the twenty-four atoms. And I know that every reaction for this to happen only requires one atom. So this is how many atoms I have. Each reaction is only one of those atoms. So this is how many reactions I'm going to have. If one reaction releases this much, I need to find out how many reactions this many, how much energy this many reactions will do. So 2.52 times 10 to the 24 times by 3.15 times 10 to the minus 11 gives me an answer of 7.9 times 10 
to the 13 joules. And that's how many joules I will be released in total. So this is all one kilogram decayed at once. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this information and actually use it elsewhere. So I'm just going to do a synoptic link by going back to thermal. Okay. And what I've got here is I've got 20 uh, degrees C water. And I want to know how much of this was released as steam. Okay. So I've got 20 degrees C of water. I know the mass of my water is 2 times 10 to the 6 kilos. I know my specific heat capacity is 4,200. And I know my latent heat of vaporization is 2.26 times 10 to the 6. So I know how much energy is given to me in total. To be released as steam, the water not only has to go from 20 to 100, but then has to be released as steam. So what I'm going to do, if I can find out how much energy it took to go from 20 to 100, whatever is left over will be the energy used to convert it into steam. So the first thing we do is work out how much energy it took to go from 20 to 100. So I'm going to use Q equals mc delta phi here. So 2 times 10 to the 6 times by 4,200 times by 80, because that is the temperature difference, gives me an answer. 2 times 10 to the 6 times by 4,200 times by 80 gives me an answer of 6.72 times 10 to the 11 joules. So that's how many joules in total is going to um, be used. So if I now work out how much I've got left, so I've got 7.9 times 10 to the 13, okay, um, 7.9 times 10 to the 13, take away the 6.72 times 10 to the uh, 11, okay, and so 7.9 times 10 to the 13 minus answer, whoops, 7.9 times 10 to the 13 minus my answer is going to be 7.83 times 10 to the 13 joules here, okay? And I can have a look here to see what I've got here. So I'm going to use Q equals ML because this is going to be changing into steam. And this is the amount of energy. And this is the latent heat of vaporization. So whatever's left here, my mass, this is the, the stuff that's been going off with steam. Okay. So I've got 7.83 times 10 to the 13 equals M times 2.26 times 10 to the 6. Okay. 2.26 times 6. Leaves me with an answer of M equals 34 point six eight six six kilogram times ten to the six kilos as you can see this number here is much bigger than the number i have for the mass originally this means the mass the all the steam all the water has been turned into steam if this number was lower than my number i started with this means that some only some of it would have been released as the steam so for example, if I only found out that 1.5 times 10 to the 6 kilos was given off a steam, the amount of water I have left would be 0.5 kilograms, or 0.5 times 10 to the 6 kilos. So what I've done here is I have taken the concept of using the formula here to find out how much energy I would have in an actual mass. And I've done this by looking at one reaction and then worked out how many reactions I would have. Now, if this reaction required two polonium, the amount of reactions, if this is how many atoms I had, the amount of reactions would actually half, because for one reaction, I would actually need two of them to participate. But in this case, I only need one of these to actually um, create, uh, one, only one polonium here to actually um, create um, this reaction to happen on. And therefore, I was able to work out in total how much energy was released, and thus was able to work out information about water using thermal. So this is actually quite a traditional way that it could end up with going, it could end up going the thermal route. And that there is a synoptic question about nuclear reactors.